All right, hello once again. This is Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College. I've been writing some Java code based off of the Tony Gaddis Java with Early Objects 5th Edition book. We've gone over all 16 chapters of the PowerPoints, and I've written programs for the first four chapters. So it's onward and upward to chapter 5. But first, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to grab my payroll program from chapter 4 and copy it and use that as kind of my template or base, whatever you want to call it, for my next one. So I'm going to do a new Java project, and I'm going to write two of these. It's going to be the exact same program, except with the second program, I'm going to add file handling. So I'm going to call this chapter 05, payroll 01. And we'll come in here and we'll create a new class. And we will call this payroll, as we have been doing. And I'm going to get rid of that that's there and add my old, my old stuff. All right. That'll give me a really good start. This might not even be that long of a lecture. So this will be a... The last one, it's the one, two, three, four. It was... Well, the last one, let's see. I'm just going to quickly open these. Okay, for some reason it doesn't want to open up. That's okay. Uh, so this is from chapter 5. And this is the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is the 6th program. So, so this is a 6th. Payroll program demonstrating I'll just say here looping and an if else statement from our from chapter five of our Gaddis textbook. Okay. We still want to in to include here our decimal formatter, our J option pane, it's called payroll. We want our max non-OT and our OT rate. We're gonna add one more constant in here. Remember, when you're creating constants, you use the word final. <clears throat> this will be an integer, and we will call it tot emps, because that's the total number of employees. And we'll initialize that to three. So, total number of employees. Now, this could be adjusted if we wanted to, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to leave it the way it is. All right, so our string for our first name, our string for our last name, our input string, our hours, our rate, our gross, and we want to add a total gross in here also. So, this will be... Tot gross. I like when a lot of stuff lines up, but this just really looks bad to me. I don't know why, but it does. You know what? It's good enough. All right. So we have our first name, our last name, our input string. I don't know if I'm going to use the output string or not, but we'll see. Um, rate, gross, total gross. We want a new decimal formatting item. We can keep them both because we had two of them we created last time. One for our currency and one for our non-currency. So that's fine. All right, now what I want to do is I want to take all this stuff that I'm doing in here, everything, 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 and I want to basically take all that and I want to enclose it inside of a loop. All right, so let's come in here and we'll start it right here. I'm going to have to move a bunch of stuff over for, oops, what happened there?
loop through all three. You know what? Let's make it five. So we'll say total number of employees is five. And we're saying here loop through all five employees. So to do that, we use a for loop for int LCV. I like to use that for my for loop. LCV for loop control variable equals zero. L LCV is less than toad imps. LCV plus plus. All right. So I want to do this now five times. So first name. Last name, whoops, last name, input string, convert, output string, convert, calculate gross pay, straight time, or overtime, build our output string. We also want to come in here after we figured out the gross pay and we want to say tote gross, tote gross plus equal gross. So we're adding that, we're, in other words, we're incrementing our accumulator. So increment total gross of all employees accumulator all right so we build the output string and show that using an option pane building the input string i'm sorry the output string for the console and we also want to show that so let me go and add as I always do, comment here that says begin with our for loop and one down here that says end with our for loop. And the only thing that is left to do down here is once we've broken out of the loop, so we're still in the program, but we're, we're, we're broken out of the loop, I'm going to say uh, let's do it both ways here. So we'll say um, J op J option pane dot show message dialog. Come on, don't do that. Null the total gross pay was plus let's just go on down to the next line here formatter dot format gross don't know how that happened but gross All right, and we'll also do a system.out.print line with this. So let me steal all of this, but I'm going to change it a little just because because I can. I don't know. So we're going to change this second one to system.out.print line. We'll start it with a blank line. How about a couple blank lines? Because we're going to put a total there. Oh, instead of this, we're going to say <clears throat> system.out.printf, which means print it in a formatted way. All right. So the total gross pay was. And I'm going to put here. Um, I'm not going to use the formatter. I'll just put a dollar sign point two F, which means give me two decimal places. All right, and then comma. Don't 
toad gross or the head should be toad gross there and it should be up above too all right and then we will do a System dot out dot print line. Boy, oh boy. End of program run. Okay. Now remember this one does not have any. This particular example does not have any um, error checking. All right, so we will have to put in valid values or the program will blow up. So let's run it and see what it looks like. And our first name, I'll, as I have been doing, I'll do everybody in my family. Jeff, Scott, 10, 10, 100. That looks good. It says end of program run, which it shouldn't. Sandy, Scott, 20, 20. 400. I got to remove that into program run. Taylor Scott 30 30 900. That's correct. Mackenzie Scott 40 40 1600. And that's correct. And Chloe Scott 50 50. Remember, she has overtime. So let's do this. Let's let's play computer here. And what I'm going to do in just a second is we're going to add the 100 that I made plus the 400 that Sandy made plus the 900 that Mackenzie made. I'm sorry, that Taylor made plus the 1600 that Mackenzie made plus the 2750 that Chloe made. So we should get for our final total 5750 if we did this right. And it says total gross pay was 5750. Okay, now let's check on our, we also printed it out here. Jeff, 10, 10, 100, I gotta remove that end of program run. Sandy, 20, 20, 400. Taylor, 30, 30, 900. Mackenzie, 40, 40, 1600. Chloe, 50, 50, 27, 50. The total gross was, so this is wrong. We'll have to fix that. Okay? That isn't bad, though. We're just spending about 10 minutes or so. How much time have we spent? 13 minutes and 15 seconds. All right, so we'll be done with this in about 15 minutes. So where's that end of program run? That has to be outside of the loop. she was so why was that printing every time there's the end of the for loop total gross pay was etc into program run that should only be printing there I think there into program run that's where it's printing from Get rid of that so that'll fix that that was okay where it was and this was wrong the total gross pay was percent point two f and tote gross that actually is correct system dot out dot print a couple blank lines total gross pay for all employees was dollar sign ah i need a percent sign there percent point two and that'll fix it so let's run it one more time. I'm going to put the same stuff in there. A little boring maybe, but Jeff, Scott, 10, 10. All right, 100. Sandy, Scott, 20, 20, 400. Taylor, Scott, 30, 30, 900. Mackenzie, Scott, 40, 40, 1600. Chloe Scott, 
50, 50, all right, 27, 50. Everything looks real good. Total gross, that looks good. And let's see what this now looks like. So there's Jeff. It's still saying in the program run. I got to fix that. Okay. That's the only one that we want to print is the one that's right there. So somewhere I'm writing in the program run. So I've got to see where I'm doing that. There it is. Right there I am. Shame on me. So before I put this program to sleep, sorry, I'm going to run it one last time. Looks good. Looks good. 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 That's correct. All right. Now let's check and see if. Notice now I only have one end of program run. There's not one there or there or there or there or there. It's right here in the program run. I'm not going to run it again, but I am going to remove that single quote that's right there that says the total gross pay was. Other than that, it looks like everything is looking the way that it should look. There's that single quote. All right, so I'm going to save that. Now I'm going to grab Control A, Control C to copy. Then I'm going to do a file, close all. I'm going to close the first copy that I just started with. And I'm going to do another file, new Java project. We're going to call this chapter 05, payroll 02. And let's create our class, which again is payroll. Get rid of that. Copy everything in here. Okay, this is a seventh program. Demonstrating looping. The if else statement. And file output from chapter five. So the way that this one is going to change, and I'm working off of my notes here, is I have to first do another import. Anytime you're working with files, you import java.io.star. All right, used for file input output. All right. Now, much of this will be the same. This is the same other than I added this. This is the same. This is all the same. But I want to come in here. Not only do I want to create new decimal format objects, I also want to create a new print writer, or also known basically as an output file object. OK? All right, and I do that by saying print writer. Uh, output file equals new print writer employees. I'm just going to call it this. I'll call it payroll.txt. OK, so that's the new file I hope to create if everything works OK. Now, notice we're getting an error. That's good. Okay? It's, if we want, we can let the system fix the error for us. The error is, this has got to say here, throws IO exception, and it doesn't currently say that. If I take my mouse, put it over the error, and tell it to add that throw, see how it added it? Right there. Throws file not found exception, and it fixed my error. Great start.
So we want to read in everything just like we did before. We could be reading it in from a file, but I chose instead of reading it into a file, I chose to write it out to a file. All right, and the only thing we have to change in here is all these output strings that, we, that we're showing right here, all that stuff. All right, I'm going to copy all of it. So that's build and display the output string. That's, that's fine. But I'm going to put another comment here too. Build and write to output file. And this output string that we have here, all these things, these are going to change. Every one of these will change to the following. Output file dot print line. We shouldn't need any backslash ends in here now, I believe. I could be wrong, but we'll find out in just a minute. to change to output file dot print line. And I'll need to put a paren at the end of each one of these lines. I know that already. So all that is now fixed. And I think what I'll do is at the end. So after each employee, I'll just print a couple backslash ends. Okay. Still build that output string, still display that. And I'm doing it here. So I'm going to now display this three ways. I'm displaying it in our console window. I'll be displaying it on line with the message dialog and displaying it in a file. All right, so I want to grab this, these two lines, the order in which I do these, of course, doesn't matter. So we'll change this to, again, output file dot print line. We'll fix both these in just a second. Oops. I think we're actually finished. I don't see any errors. It says here, output file is never closed. So, okay, we'll do that at the very bottom. Output file dot close. All right, that should remove the one warning that we had here, which was in there, good. So, let's run it. You already seen, let's put new stuff in here. So, Bob, Jones, 2025, so he made $500. Mary Smith, she'll be Mary Smythe, 3025, so she should make $750. Barb Crone, $35, $50. Um, 
Mike Wilson, 50, 60. And Maureen White, 10, 19.5. All right, so I've got all that. Total gross pay was that. I'm going to take for granted that that's correct. Should also be printing here. So 500 plus 750 is 1250. That calculation's right. That calculation's right. 1250 and 1750 is $3,000, and that calculation's right. Uh, 6300, I'm taking for granted that that's right. 6400, 6500, 6495, so that's all correct. All right, now I have to search for this because the, the file should be here, but you have to kind of look for it, for lack of better words. <sighs> this has happened to me before, so I'm going to do it like this. Sorry. I'm going to open up my Java folder, and I'm going to open up my payroll too, and there's payroll.txt. And I'm going to open it in, in here in brackets. There's Bob Jones. There's Mary Smythe. There's Barb Crone. There's Mike Wilson. There's Maureen White. There's the total in the end of the run. Now, I probably have too many. I didn't really need those backslash ends in here. So I'm going to just remove those and run it one last time. Close this put in different names so that you can see that the file itself will change. So let's take our window here and our console window and clear that. Let's run the program again. Ken. Ken. 10, 10. Mark, Mark, 20, 30, Ben, Ben, 40, 40, Gary, Gary, 50, 50, Jim, James, 60, 60. All right, so the total gross pay was $67.50, which was what we got here. Ken, Ken, Mark, Mark, Ben, Ben, Gary, Gary, Jim, James. I'm going to take for granted that all of those were right. And let's go back in and open up that same file. Notice it's got a timestamp of 537, which is the current time. Ken, Ken. Oh, I didn't. I didn't remove the back. The back two backslash ends. Darn it. All right. Let me do it one more time. In fact, let's totally remove. Well, we'll leave the file there. You saw it was already overwritten, but that's fine. So I want to come back in here, clear the console window, and someplace in here I've got. I'm writing that backslash n twice. I want the one at the end, that's okay, but somewhere in here, there, I don't need this line anymore. I think that that'll look a little nicer then. After these slashes, I'm going to add one more backslash in there. I think that'll look nicer. All right. Mary, Mary, 2020. Katie, Kate, Kate, 30, 30. Barb, Barb, 40, 50. Richard, Richards, 70, 70. Jeffrey, Jeffreys, 80, 80. Okay. And there are all the employees, the 17,250. Outputs, 17,250, that's good. And if we bring that up one last time, 
In fact, I'll bring it up as I have been in Notepad++. Yeah, that looks a little nicer. I guess I could have put another blank line there, but I won't bore you with doing that. So, I want another. I want a blank line after the gross pay, and maybe yeah, that'll fit, put one there too. So that's good. All right. So I'm not going to run it again, but I am going to make that change. So. Plus backslash n. That should make it look a little nicer. All right, so let's take it from the top. I'm only going to explain this one because the two programs, 6 and 7, are the same, except that 7 has the additional file handling. So the 6 one said all this, except it didn't say file output. The 6 one was exactly the same as this, but since we weren't doing files, we didn't have the java.io. IO for input output. When you include I.O., whatever routine you include it in, and here it's main, you either have to put throws, file not found exception, or you have to use what's called a try-catch block, which we'll go over in a later chapter. We did add one more constant total emps for the total number of employees that we have. That's why it ran five times. All right. This was all the same right there. We added the total gross for all five employees. We had our decimal formatting object last time. We added this is new. So we put in there that we wanted a print writer. So we're wrapping that print writer up. And what, so what we're saying is out file is now an alias for payroll.txt. We read in all of our information. Those are our four fields. We calculated our gross pay. Less than or equal to 40, they get straight time. Otherwise, they get overtime. We added that gross pay to our total gross. We wrote it to our output file. We wrote it to the console. In the console window. And here, display this via a... That was the console window right there. Whoa. Well, I don't know how I did that. Via the console window, and it'll be via a message dialog all right and that should be everything once we got out of our loop which was here then we printed out our final our totals are so display final totals on screen in file and in console window all right save that let's run it one more time to make sure we didn't break anything and i'll put in the old jeff scott this time i'll be 50 50 sandy Scott will be 40. Whoops, well, that said 400. So that's good. Let's just say she makes $10 an hour. She did pretty well anyway. She worked 404 hours. All right. Taylor, Scott, 30, 30. Mackenzie, Scott, 20, 20. And Chloe, Got 10, 10. All right. That's skewed a little bit because Sandy made so much money. That's fine. We've also got that information here. Jeff, Sandy, Taylor, Mackenzie, Chloe. Our end of program run. That looks good. Let's just look at our file. And once we do that, we're finished. 
I want to reload it, yes. So there's Jeff. I've got that blank line in there now, so this looks pretty nice. For some reason it didn't print after the last, oh, that's because it, okay. I should have had one more blank line. It's no biggie. So we're done. When I come back again, I'm going to go into the next chapter, and I'm not sure exactly what that is, so I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to go and save this or do anything special with it. I will clear my console window here, and uh, get ready for the next chapter.